The New York Times recently wrote that scrubbing carbon from the sky is the new climate gold rush. Gold rush, really? I'm very sceptical, but let's have a look. The supposed gold rush is a technology known as carbon dioxide removal. That's anything which reduces the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. The New York Times article summarizes the many recent investments into startups pursuing these technologies. To date, they make up about 5 billion US dollars that went into startups. The investments are backed, among others, by Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, because who better to tackle carbon emissions than guys whose private jets have a carbon footprint the size of Luxembourg? The management consulting firm McKinsey estimates that the market for carbon dioxide removal will grow to a staggering 1.2 trillion by 2050. Trillion! That's the most remarkable turn of events. Carbon dioxide removal used to be a taboo topic. Environmentalists were arguing that it's just a ploy by the fossil fuel companies to encourage us to keep using their products, that it had just cost a lot of money and distract us from better solutions. And that's basically correct, but it doesn't matter. The International Energy Agency concluded already in 2022 that reaching net zero by 2050 is virtually impossible without carbon dioxide removal. The IPCC too has found that carbon dioxide removal is part of all modelled scenarios that limit global warming to 2 degrees or lower by 2100. Environmentalists can now either admit that we have no chance to reach our climate goals or embrace carbon dioxide removal. And so the conversation about carbon dioxide removal has changed a lot in the past years. A recent study on how people discuss carbon dioxide removal in social media found that the frequency has markedly gone up and the sentiment has become increasingly positive. This is why I guess the New York Times speaks of a gold rush. It's the enthusiasm plus the forecast of substantial market growth. However, if you look at the stocks of some carbon dioxide removal ETFs or companies, there isn't much going on. And the status of carbon dioxide removal is way, way below the targets. This, for example, is a figure from the 2024 report on the status of carbon dioxide removal. On the left in dark grey, you see the approximate amount of carbon dioxide we currently remove. On the right in ochre, the amount we need to remove to reach the Paris goal. You might say that doesn't look too bad. It's just about a factor three or so. Yes, but look at this other figure. Almost all the currently existing carbon dioxide removal comes from reforestation or rather land use changes. This contribution can't increase much because there's only so much land on Earth. It's just about a tenth of a percent that's currently removed by new methods. It's those new methods that can scale and that need to be scaled by the year 2050 by more than a factor 1000. But wait, it gets worse. Almost all of the existing carbon dioxide removal that isn't reforestation is biocar and bioenergy with carbon capture and storage. Those are these ochre parts here. Both of those work by growing plants and then burning them without releasing the carbon. Those two are difficult to significantly scale up because they require a lot of land. The technologies that can scale are things like direct air capture, basically a way of filtering air or seawater extraction, because seawater takes up the carbon dioxide from the air or distributing minerals that absorb it, known as enhanced weathering. We talked about all of those in an earlier episode. The problems with these scalable methods is that at the moment they're hideously expensive. Estimates say that the cost of direct air capture needs to fall by at least a factor 10 for it to begin making commercial sense. McKinsey expects this to happen rather soon, but I am very, very skeptical. You see, once carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere, it distributes and dilutes very quickly. Entropy increases. If you want to get it back out without taking up large areas of land, you need to reduce entropy a lot. That requires energy, and energy costs 
money. Another way to see the problem is this figure. Reducing costs will require further technology improvements. But while the amount of funding into carbon capture by grants has gone up in the past decade, the number of new inventions has gone down. Though you'll be thrilled to hear that, progress or not, the number of publications has skyrocketed. At the moment, the excitement for carbon dioxide removal is based on pledges by big companies, including tech companies and multiple airlines. They say they'll buy carbon credits to offset their emissions. If the offsetting remains too expensive, the market will never come into existence. But what all this means is that we now have perfect conditions for a new economic bubble. Congratulations, humans. Well done. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and how to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.